Once again, I am Jennifer Nyem, facilitator of this webinar series. Thank you for staying, staying with us. Well, those who have just so joined in, welcome. Our moderator for this session is Dr. Emeline Barion Dupo, an esteemed professor at the Institute of Biological Sciences, College of Arts and Sciences, and an MNH curator for moths and spiders. May we call on Dr. Dupo to introduce our third speaker for the day and the first for this afternoon session. So let me first, uh, let me now introduce you to Philip, our speaker for this afternoon. Philip is MNH's curator for small mammals and other wildlife. He graduated from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, with a bachelor's degree in biology and has completed a master's degree in wildlife studies also from the same university. Philip worked for several years as a field biologist in many conservation organizations in the Philippines, pursuing a special interest in the diverse species of bats before he was eventually hired as a research associate by the MNH. A few years later, he transferred to the Institute of Biological Sciences, College of Arts and Sciences as faculty. He is now an associate professor to and teaching wildlife and ecology courses. He is a member of the Philippine Mammal Project team, a multi-institutional international collaborative effort led by Dr. Larry Heaney of the Field Museum, Chicago. Philip is on the roster of experts of the DNR Biodiversity Management Bureau and has served as a member of the Philippine Red List Committee for Wild Fauna and the DNR Technical Working Group for Mammals. Among his latest contributions to the DNR is his co-authorship of the DNR Manual on Biodiversity Assessment and Monitoring System for Inland Wetland Ecosystem. Philip is recognized as one of the UP system's top researchers in 2018 after being chosen as one of the 100 Asian scientists by the Asian Scientist Magazine and winning the 2017 NAST Outstanding Young Scientist Award. So without further ado, let us welcome for this afternoon our speaker, Professor Philip Albiola. Ma'am Amy, so start to name talk. Uh, right. Uh, pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Amy, for the introduction. So I'm here to talk about the, the role of the UVLB MNH staff and curators and Philippine bat, bat virus uh, studies, the virus hunters. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so just a flashback. So I'm here to, to tell you a, a one of the major UPLB MNH milestone. When in 2016, we published a paper on uh, a genetically divergent hantavirus, which was, uh, we recovered from a frugivorous bat, uh, the Geoffroy Roussette. So you can see in the underlined, uh, there's Dr. Joseph Masangkai, there's me, uh, the late James Alvarez, uh, Ed Eres, Ed Cos uh, Edison Cosico, and Nina, Nina Kibod. So these are uh, the staff and curators of MNH. So in this paper, this marks the first time that the, all the MNH curators uh, and, and the staff as well were included in a virology paper. And what it strikes me with this paper in 2016 is that uh, our Japanese collaborators, so we, we were doing this virus research with, with Japanese collaborators. So, so our collaborators, collaborators recognized for, uh, that the, the MNH uh, expertise in fieldwork and intellectual contribution uh, played a, a major role in the success of our research into Philippine bat virus research. And essentially, uh, what we bring to the table on this collaboration with several Japanese universities is that we, we know we have an intimate knowledge on bat ecology, taxonomy, and of course, the science and of course, the art of bat capture. So it's not just about uh, knowing what the bats are, knowing them uh, in paper, but actually knowing how they fly, where to capture them. And it proved to be a very uh, successful in, very successful in, 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 in our project. Right, more flashback. So how did we start uh, this collaborative work between several Japanese universities and UPLB MNH? So let's look back um, at the turn of the 20th century, uh, 21st century. So the SARS epidemic, the first SARS, was probably the first uh, pandemic 
of the 21st century that, that reached a global scale and resulted to more than 8,000 cases and a fatality rate of a fatality of uh, around 774 deaths. And several researchers, several virologists and bacteriologists scrambled during this time to, to determine which caused this virus. And, uh, and they found out uh, that um, the mask civet, Paguma larvata, is the, the, the intermediate host, which was sold in wet markets in, in, some, in one part of China. And the reservoir was the, the Chinese uh, horseshoe bat, or the Rhinolophus sinicus. So uh, looking at this research, results back then, uh, several virologists have, uh, have uh, shifted their attention to, to looking into the, uh, the diversity of virus in, on bats. So essentially what happened was that the SARS epidemic uh, started the uh, 2002, plus of course the bats resulted to our research team. So essentially this was formed in 2007 with Dr. Joseph Masankai and Dr. Uh, Yoshikawa, Yasuhiro Yoshikawa, uh, here in this uh, inset um, circle. So they talk about looking in, uh, doing surveys of virus on Philippine bats and uh, not much actually has been done before uh, on Philippine bat virology. And so this, uh, their conversation re resulted into a collaborative effort with several institutions in UPLB and in Japan. Uh, in UPLB, uh, m and uh, was included, uh, College of Veterinary Medicine, of course, Dr. Joseph Masangkai is there, and the Institute of Biological Sciences, which I became eventually a, a staff in 2012. So this um, collaboration is a, is a multi-partite uh, disciplinary uh, collaboration uh, with virologists, microbiologists, veterinarians, bat ecologists, and museum technicians. Right, so before that, I would like to present to you the UPLB m &H staff curators, virus hunters. So we four have been at it since the start in 2007. Uh, we were led by Dr. Joseph Masankai, who was then uh, not yet retired. Uh, he's a professor emeritus and also a curator. He's a team leader. And there's me. Uh, I'm, I was the bat ecologist on, on the project. And we were joined by two museum technicians, very able, very the supermen of uh, UPLB m and Eduardo Eres, who's already retired, and Edison Cosico, who were, uh, both, are, both were field technicians. And as the years gone by, uh, we were also joined by several staff of the m &H as well, starting with James Alvarez, the late James Alvarez, my good friend, my dear friend, who was an extension associate uh, back then. And there was also Ariel Lorona, Lorona who came on board in 2012. And uh, the latest addition, uh, Mr. Florante Cruz, who's an extension specialist at the uh, UPLB m &H. And he's in charge with documenting, uh, uh, providing videos and taking pictures of, our, of what we do. So if you've seen uh, one of his uh, videos about our work, uh, I think it was shown back in March or late February. Okay. Right, so what did we do uh, during, those, um, during our surveys in, 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 on bats? So of course we did bat capture. So this is uh, where the m &H expertise comes in. So looking into, which places would be the most strategic or optimal for a high uh, volume of bat capture. And in the process, uh, several Japanese uh, collaborators also participated as well in, in, in capturing these bats. And after we, we captured these bats, we also did um, a laboratory work in the field. So we did a makeshift laboratory work in the field and, and well into the tradition of, of, of a Japanese efficiency. So we did our work uh, in an assembly line. So as you can see in the, the, the middle picture at the top. So it started with us, me, Ed, and Edison. So it started with us identifying the, the bat and then taking in measurements, uh, taking in other biological information such as reproductive condition. And in some instances, we also take, on, uh, take in record um, echolocation calls. And then eventually it will be passed on to, to these uh, our Japanese collaborators. So 
taking swabs, taking blood samples, taking fecal samples, and in some instances, uh, taking other internal organs as well. And on the, the third picture on the right, uh, as you can see here, um, we also do work uh, very conscientiously when dealing with bats. So we're taking uh, safety precaution, especially as you can see here are some of our colleagues, Japanese colleagues wearing uh, uh, facial masks. And of course, to the bats as well, to the bats as well. So before we release them, so we give them, provide them with sugar water, uh, you know, uh, for them to recover all the, the, the lost nutrients that they've lost during the, 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 their capture. Right, so what, where did we go? Okay, so during the past, so since 2007, so it's now 2020, so around 20, uh, 13 years, so we've visited 11 provinces, all in all, and several islands, uh, including 19 caves. So a lot of our work were concentrated uh, in Southern Tagalog or Southern South Luzon. So here in, in Yucalus Banos, in Diliman, but we also did work in, in Pangasinan and in Pulilio Island, and then going south to Bicol, and then in uh, Panay Island, and then within the Davao region. And all in all, uh, af after all those 13 years of doing surveys, we captured a total of 30 bat species, uh, about uh, more than a thousand bat individuals. And we, we took in oral and anal swabs, fecal pellets. Uh, these are uh, definitely non-intrusive, but uh, for very few instances, we also took in, um, uh, internal organs from sacrificed bats. And from there, our Japanese counterparts did some serology and sequencing techniques. Okay, so let's go to the point. Okay, let's go to the, the meat of my presentation. So our published results. So, so what have we accomplished with, with you know, work doing, uh, studying the viruses from Philippine bats? <clears throat> First, uh, in 2009, so this was in Malay, Aklan. So Malay is the municipality where Boracay is under. Okay, so in 2009, we published a paper in Virus Genes, uh, Detection of a New Bat uh, Gamma Herpes Virus in the Philippines. So we captured it, uh, we, uh, we detected that the, the, the virus in Hypsoderus diadema, as you can see in this bat here. Uh, this bat, this is the, uh, Diadem's round leaf bat is the largest insect eating bat in the Philippines. And we call that Sider's so Diadema Herpes Virus 1 or HDHV1. And looking into the, the, the phylogeny, um, <clears throat> and as you can see, the HDHV1 is part of the Gamma Herpes, herpes Virinae group. And what is very interesting here is that. Um, the HDHB1 is also subsumed, uh, has also has members that include HHV8, I see uh, at the top, and EBV. HHV8 is uh, Kaposi sarcoma virus, which is uh, cancerous, and EBV, okay, it's uh, Epstein Barr virus, which uh, affects the, the, the lymph nodes and the blood vessels. So, essentially, what we, uh, what that the virus that we recovered from, from, from this hypocidaris uh, diadema um, has, um, is re relative, it's a relative of some of, the, some of the viruses that are pathogenic to humans. Right, uh, the year after, uh, we did a survey in UP Los Banos and UP Deliman and came out with a paper. Uh, the results of that, uh, that survey are capturing of bats there is that We've detected coronaviruses in several localities in UPLB, in UP Diliman, and in Ninoy Aquino Parks and Wildlife Center. So this is the BMB office in, in Quezon City. So what we've seen is that alpovirus, so, so there were two types of, uh, of coronaviruses that were, were detected uh, from the bats that we captured. So the first one is the alpha coronavirus and appears to be only found in, in insect-eating bats. This one is the Scatophilus culi. So it is found in UP Diliman. 
And the second uh, coronavirus, the beta coronavirus, uh, we found them in high prevalence, particularly in UP Los Banos. So of the 21 bats that we captured there, uh, 15 tested positive or had this beta coronavirus. And one very interesting uh, note here is that the SARS-CoV-2, Mark II, the, the, the virus that is affecting today, is under the beta coronavirus uh, genus. So very interesting here. And uh, later on, I will discuss the, the research implications of, of our findings here in UP Los Banos. Uh, you can see here, sorry. Yeah. Right. And then again in Diliman, uh, UP Diliman, and then we also went to Quezon National Park which is in Atimona and Rizal, okay? So we found um, uh, rebuff antibodies. So not the virus itself, but antibodies of the Reston Ebola virus in, uh, in one species of fruit bat, the Rosetus M. plexi caudatus. So Reston Ebola virus is a member of the filovirus and these family of virus, uh, some of these members are some of the most uh, deadly uh, virus known to man, which includes the Zaire Ebola virus and the Marburg Ebola virus. So here, uh, what we've recovered is that the, the, the Rebov or the rest of the Ebola virus. So we recovered that in UP Diliman from a one bat individual and also in Keston National Park, uh, about six individuals. But uh, do not be alarmed. Uh, unlike uh, uh, its other members of the filovirus, rest of the Ebola virus is non-pathogenic to humans. So it doesn't manifest any, any pathogenic symptoms or any uh, pathogenic manifestation. So it's, it's quite benign. So if you remember back in 1991, I, I hope some of you were born already that. So there was an outbreak of Ebola virus in a monkey farm in Kalamba. So it was first traced in, in, in a monkey farm there. So, and then eventually we, we, we confirmed it, uh, it was present or at least uh, the bats were exposed to, to this kind of, uh, of virus. Right, again, uh, in Quezon National Park. So this was the, the, the paper that I showed you at the start of my presentation. So the hantavirus in Rosetus and Plexical Datus. So if you may remember back in early March or late February, there was another scare that came out in the news about an emerging virus, hantavirus in China, which came, uh, came from, from, a, from rodents. Actually, the, the hantavirus that coming from rodents are, are quite lethal and it can be fatal to man. And uh, it can have a fatality rate of up to 10 or 15%. So there have been several outbreaks, uh, some in, in recent years in the United States. So for the first time, we, we found this um, uh, hantavirus, novel hantavirus, again in Rosetus, uh, Amplexia caudatus, in Kesson National Park. But it has an extremely low prevalence. So out of the 376 bats that we captured, only one was positive. And of course, this novel hantavirus that we captured and we, we detected here in, uh, in, in Rosetus, it's, uh, it's not fatal, it, it doesn't manifest any uh, pathogenic reactions or it's, it's not harmful, detrimental to, to humans. Okay, right. And then, and from 2012 to 2017 or 2000, uh, uh, in those dates. So we also visited uh, several areas in Davao. So in Davao City, in Davao Oriental and in Samal Island. So we, 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 we surveyed the bats there, captured, and then uh, tested them for virus presence. And we published this paper uh, documenting uh, a teropin or toria virus in fruit bats in the Philippines. So it's the first uh, of that virus that has been detected here in, in the Philippines. So uh, of course, in other countries, it's all already been um, um, documented. So PRV or the teropin or toreo virus, so some of its uh, strains uh, can cause respiratory tract infection in humans. So there's already a 
zoonotic uh, phenomenon that's happening, uh, that's already happened. So, and here in the Philippines, uh, in our research, uh, we recorded it in two species of fruit bats from, uh, from nine individuals. So again, the, the Geoffroy's rosette and the, the nectar bat, the Aeonectris pilea. So one thing I have to add about these two species, uh, the rosettus and the Aeonectris, so these are obligate cave dwellers. So they are uh, more usually, uh, more often found uh, roosting inside caves. So, Hello. Again, and so we, we detected it in, in two species of uh, fruit bats. And uh, we also did uh, serology testing. And of the 84 fruit bats that we captured, we tested 76 tested positive for neutralizing antibodies. So meaning uh, almost 90% of the bats that we captured there were at some point in, their in time were, were exposed to this uh, to this uh, teropin or to real virus. Okay. Right. Uh, so those were the publications, the published work. So, so we also have results that we've gathered uh, in recent times, so 2018, 2017. So we're still doing some work with them, uh, still trying to do some, some an analysis. So, so what are those? Okay, first, Hinepa virus. So some of the prominent members would be the Nipah virus and the Hendra virus. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you remember this, but back in 2014, uh, this was in October, uh, TV Patrol, ABS-CBN reported uh, an outbreak, an acute, uh, they called the acute encephalitis syndrome in Sultan Kudarat. Uh, at first, it was reported before it was reported as food poisoning. So what happened here is that several people um, butchered a, a horse and partake in it, uh, uh, consumed the horse, and then they got sick, and then they went to the hospital. Some of them went to the hospital. The health worker got sick. <clears throat> so in total, there were about 11 fatalities during this time. So the, the, the news said it was 10. So there were about 11 fatalities uh, resulting to acute encephalitis. And this was reported in a paper, actually, we didn't do this paper, outbreak of Nipah virus infection in 2014 uh, by uh, Paula Ching and uh, co-authors. So Paula Ching is uh, with RITM in Alabama. So they reported this. Uh, so. With this result, with this result in 2014, so we were very alarmed. Some of our Japanese collaborators were very alarmed at the same time, excited as well. But going to Sultan Kudrat and going to Ground Zero and sampling the basket because uh, the paper by by Ching et al. just um, documented the 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 clinic the, the the clinics the the, uh, the clinical pathology of the, the, the fatalities and those that contracted the disease. But they, they did not uh, look into which was the source. So at first it was the horse. Uh, but in other countries, in Nipah, Malaysia, and Hendra in, in, in Australia, they've identified, they, 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 they identified, zone in the source of this virus on flying foxes. So, it is probably highly likely that the source of this uh, uh, virus was from bats as well, from bats. So we, so we did our field work in 2019 in Del Carmen, Shargao. Yeah, we, we, we went there and we captured several species of bats, uh, about 10 species. And one species, so there's the edema, the one in, 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 in red box, uh, showed positive um, antibody reaction to to, uh, to Hendra virus and to Nipah virus. So they tested positive for individuals, but uh, performing further performing RT PCR revealed that they're negative for the NIV genome. <clears throat> so very interesting. Although they they tested negative for the genome, but the fact that they tested positive for the antibody means that they've been exposed. So these bats, uh, the hypostodirus diadema, uh, were exposed to 
two Nipah virus. Okay. So very, very interesting. Hopefully we can, we can publish the results sometime late this year or hopefully early next year. But we do want to go to Sultan Qadra to go to that ground zero uh, to do some work there and look at probably the source to uh, capture some bands. And very recent, uh, in March 2020, just a few days before the lockdown, we also went to Biak Nabato <clears throat> uh, National Park in, in Bulacan. And, <clears throat> oh, sorry. and uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Dr. Yumi Une, uh, <clears throat> uh, detected uh, fox virus particles uh, in Sinopterus brachiotis, this fruit bat. Okay, so they did, uh, detected fox particles. So, and usually, uh, they, uh, Dr. Une told me that these uh, fox virus would manifest themselves on bats as slash uh, lesions and rashes, as shown here. So, so this this photo here is not from the Philippines; it's from David at Al, uh, the fox virus in Israel, or I think uh, some part of uh, Middle East. So. So uh, what's very interesting is that I, as a bat biologist, as a bat biologist, I've been seeing these lesions and rashes uh, on bats uh, since I started work 20 years ago. And, it's, uh, and it can be seen in specimens. So it'd be, be worthwhile to, to, to re, uh, revisit or re-examine the, the, the specimens that we have of bats and try to see if, uh, these lesions and rashes are present. And what you have to remember is that Fox Verde, so Fox virus, includes the pathogenic and the very deadly smallpox and the, the monkeypox. Smallpox has been responsible for several millions of deaths uh, worldwide, uh, some of them in, in the, the New World and even at the start of the, the human civilization, uh, smallpox has been a very, um, were, were already present back then. Right. Okay. right. So essentially, we've done, uh, we published the papers there, and we still have uh, results that will be published eventually. So what are the highlights of uh, of our research? So essentially, we've detected virus viruses from our last count about twelve Philippine bat species. So out of the 30 species that we sampled, well, it's very interesting. I have this doodlings on my screen. Huh, what is that? Okay, so we, we, we recovered or detected uh, viruses from 12 Philippine bat species. Some of them whole genome sequence, some of them um, at least antibody uh, uh, reactions or uh, And then these viruses, uh, we detected about eight viruses, them all, including several genotypes. And what I, I have to reiterate, forcefully reiterate here is that these viruses that we've recovered, we've detected on, you know, on Philippine bats, uh, they are not pathogenic. So they don't cause this, uh, what's happening right now with, with SARS, uh, with NCOV-19 or SARS-CoV-2. So they're not pathogenic. So these, um, I'm sure there will be questions afterwards about this one. And we've also produced 12 publications in high impact journals. And more will be counting on, uh, uh, more publications soon, uh, soon to come. Right, uh, aside from my, my, the title of my talk, which is uh, relay, relaying the, the, the contribution of the MNH staff and curators in bat virus research, I would also like this, to take this opportunity to, to to offer some research suggestions to, to uh, the UPLB right now is uh, undertaking a, collab, a collaborative effort, a multi-institutional effort within, within our university for zoonotic research. And I would like to take this opportunity to, to provide um, advice or at least suggestions based from the results of our, our work. Okay, first of all, uh, you've prob uh, I've just mentioned the presence of beta coronavirus in UPLB. So perhaps uh, one of the, the research projects that the, 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 zo the zoonosis um, uh, center can do is that we start our own backyard. 
here in our campus. We do a field surveillance uh, based from our research, it's present in tree fruit bat species and in high prevalence. And some of these are Sinopterus macutis and Pinocyrus jagori. And these species are quite common. Uh, they're associated with, uh, they, can, they can be found in forests, but also associated with disturbed habitats and urban settings. And they also roost sometimes, uh, roost in, in buildings as well. So back in 2007, we captured these bats that were, that were tested positive for coronavirus here at the Hortorium, uh, the uh, library. But these bats also roost on, on buildings that are, we are very familiar with, that some of us take classes in. So for example, in, in Baker Hall, Dito sa tapat, uh, here at the balcony. So there's a, a roost of uh, a tinochires there. In IBS, uh, especially dun sa likod, we have a species there. And in UCAS building, uh, there, there, are, there are bats, uh, tinochires to go right, that are roosting there as well. So essentially what we can do, uh, once we know where they are, is we can monitor, uh, we can monitor the presence of the virus on these bats and monitor when is the time that do they shed this virus. So bats would normally shed their viruses through urine, feces, or saliva. And we would want to know uh, if these shedding episodes is connected with, let's say, their reproductive condition or let's say if they are pregnant. So we would want to look into that, do some biosurveillance Long term, you can provide longitudinal data, let's say, for example, one year or even two years of data, and that will prove we can monitor the dynamics between the bats and uh, the virus itself. Okay, uh, number two suggestion would be uh, I've shown this map before, so some of the, 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 the sampling sites that we've done, and you will definitely notice some huge. Um, unexplored areas, the, the areas that we haven't done any research on. So for example, in Palawan, uh, it's been taking us several, several years without success to, to go into Palawan and do bat virus research there. In Western Visayas, like Cebu, Negros, uh, Bohol, and most parts of Panay. And in Northern, Northern Luzon, definitely. So there are several, so many places in, in in, in, in the country that uh, we don't have any data on. So those, that, those areas are open season for, for, for bat virus research, definitely. Number three. Okay, so some of you might be familiar with the giant fruit bats. We have that, a Ceridon and Teropu. So these bats are the largest bats that, uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, and during the 13 years of our work, we haven't captured any. So in the 13 years, and as I've said before, uh, these large uh, fruit bats are known reservoir of the highly pathogenic, highly fatal Hanipa virus, uh, particularly in Malaysia, in Australia, and in Bangladesh. And these bats are capable of long distance flight. As you can see here in this map, uh, so the, those doodlings here are uh, those, um, they attach uh, radio collars on these bats and they, they track the movements by satellite, and one individual actually traveled uh, 12 kilometers around at least 50 kilometers from the roost site. And some of this, these bats are also known to forage or travel 100 kilometers from their roost site. So, so they, they can travel long distance, and of course, they can, with, the, with the potential of that, with that long distance flight, they can come into contact with, with uh, urban areas or at least uh, pastoral areas. Uh, one very interesting uh, fact is that in Bangladesh, as you can see in this uh, photograph over here, uh, the night vision photo, uh, one uh, flying fox was drinking in a palm sap. So palm sap, uh, this was in Bangladesh, so uh, palm sap, uh, they, they fermented for, for alcoholic beverage, very similar to what we are doing here in the Philippines particularly in the Visayas, in Tuba. And we have anecdotal evidence that 
some animals are known to drink tuba, uh, known to drink this fermented uh, uh, coconut sap. Uh, birds have done it, and uh, squirrels have done, done it in Palawan, and bats as well. So what happened in Bangladesh is there's been transmission. Uh, they've, they've traced uh, Hinepa viruses in the palm sap. And of course, the people are drinking it. And there have been cases, uh, this has been published by John Epstein, my, my colleague, uh, on, 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 um, on this, um, drinking the palm sap. Okay, uh, for the fourth one, um, there are also baths that are associated with buildings and houses. So you definitely notice that some of the baths are um, uh, living in, in attics. Uh, so these bats are the, 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 the primary bats that do that are Scatophilus culi, which is here uh, on the left, uh, the left bat, uh, which is actually having uh, you know, two, um, two offspring uh, cling to their mother, and the Tapizos melanopogam. So these two bats, uh, at the very least for Scatophilus culi, we've detected alpha coronavirus there and even astrovirus in other studies. So these are two bats. Uh, we also have that in within UPLB, uh, living inside buildings. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, discovered a colony of Scatophilus here in IPB, this is uh, the this, uh, main building, but this, uh, uh, at the back. Uh, there are quite, uh, uh, quite a number of them, about around 1,000, uh, 200, 300 individuals. And for Tafazos Melanopogon, the, the the attic, the ceiling of the Baker Hall, all of that that you that very wide, very long attic, those is an open space, and it's filled with bats, filled with tapas those melanopogon. If some of you happen to walk by in Baker Hall at around 6 p.m. or 5:30 p.m., you will see these bats, this uh, tapas those melanopogon, uh, the bat on the right. You will see them emerging. Uh, in burst in, in, in very high numbers. And uh, we estimate that there are about at least a thousand individuals of them. So, and in NCPC, we've also locate, uh, found them, uh, especially at the lobby, and in biotech, in biotech buildings. So there are a lot of, uh, our buildings actually host uh, a lot of these uh, species of bats that, uh, it's very interesting to, 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 to look into, uh, do they harbor um, novel uh, viruses? Okay, and uh, lastly, okay, uh, it will be very, very interesting as well to, to look into this uh, caves with high tourist volume. So caves nowadays, uh, particularly with the underground river, especially when they were elected to the seven natural wonders of the world. So tourists by the thousands every day uh, flock into to, to the cave to, to witness the, the beauty of the, the natural formation. So uh, we have several caves that, uh, that mm, are famous uh, for tourists for visit. And, and these caves also harbor bats. So aside from the St. Paul or Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park. We also have the Biak Nabato National Park. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. And then we also have the Cavinti Underground River and Cave Complex. Uh, Cavinti is in, is in Laguna. So these caves host uh, a, a multi species assemblage of bats, and their colony size can reach up to several thousands of individuals. So it would be very, very worthwhile uh, to look into uh, the diversity of, 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 of viruses, that are, viruses that are found in bats. And most especially because uh, they come into contact, close contact with humans. And uh, although this, is prob uh, this might be, um, the probability is not very high, but these cases can prove to be ground zero for for virus transmission from bats to, to humans. And then of course, being tourists, they come from different places all over the Philippines, sometimes outside of the Philippines, foreigners. So, so the, 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 the potential danger is there. Okay, right. So I think I still have time. Right. Uh, 
And I also want to point out uh, 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 for, for, for the members of the, the Zoonosis Center. So we have this group, the BAT One Health Research Network. So this research network is a global um, collaboration between, it brings to the, to the table, it, it merges the discipline of virology, um, veterinarians, microbiologists, bat ecologists, and conservation biologists. So they, our group recognizes the fact that although bats are a special reservoir, special reservoir of these uh, several novel viruses, we also recognize the fact that bats are not the enemy here. And the bats, it's not the fault of the bats that we're having this uh, bat-related pandemics, the SARS, but it's, it's the humans too. And uh, one of our uh, advocacies here in, in Born, in what we call our group, the Born Bat One Health Research Network, is actually partly funded by the United States Department of Defense. So aside from doing research on viruses, uh, and we're, uh, the work is also looking into the potential of, you know, probably ma weaponize because some uh, trying to, to to prevent that from happening. So, so we have four working groups. So essentially, uh, if some of you are interested in doing bat virus work, so our our, our research network has this several um, uh, recommendations on how to do research, uh, or not how to do research, but very exciting uh, research topics that are very relevant, uh, such as uh, researching host and pathogen biology. So that's working group number one. And then diagnostics and field surveillance. That's working group number two. And then uh, working on bat ecology, bat behavior and distribution, and how does this relate to pathogen dynamics, pathogen spillovers. And also looking into researching human and bat interaction. So, dito na yung ecotourism, uh, the dangers of ecotourism, going to places where there are bats, or hunting and commodity chain, which happened with, with, uh, with SARS, uh, the, both the SARS pandemic. Okay, so to wrap up my, my talk, so what we found here, what, we, what I've shown you is that uh, over the years, 13 years, so virologists, Veterinarians, microbiologists, wildlife biologists can work beautifully well together as exemplified by the number of publications that we did and the camaraderie, of course, the camaraderie. And we've been, uh, we're still at it. We're still continuing through the years. Like right now, we're, we're working on proposals on expanding our, 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 our research uh, questions. So I urge you, if you're a virologist, uh, you're interested in bat viruses, Go to the UPLB Museum of Natural History. We have, uh, you want bats, we'll give you bats. Okay, maraming salamat po and have a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Uh, have you seen any connection between feeding and roosting habits of bats with the types of viruses that had been de detected in them? Uh, we have not, um, at least here in the Philippines, what we've done, at least our group have done, we have not yet delved deeper into that kind of uh, inquiry. Well, that's very interesting. So looking into foraging behavior and what kind of virus, so do they have correlation between what it eats and what viruses they harbor? Uh, no, we haven't done deeper. We haven't looked into that. Very, very interesting to, to look into that topic, yeah, definitely. So we're, uh, with that question, we're now extending the, the, the realm, the, the scope of our, our the, the questioning the scope of our question into not just documenting what viruses they are and but looking into other factors expanding it uh what are the causes of the virus probably because what it feeds on could have a re could have a if could, could be a factor in what kind of viruses do, do they have but yeah it will be very very interesting to look into that okay, so the question was from dr sabino mm. sir sir noel uh we should talk although uh we have some studies done in other parts of the uh, in other countries that would suspect that there is a causative correlation between the two but here in the philippines will have yeah. so let me read a comment from dr lourdes cardenas also a curator of mnh 
Good Hello, researches. Bro. I'm glad to see how preclinical research is coming of age now. Just one of the many spin-offs of such researches. Who among, uh, who among us are involved in the UPLB Zoonosis Center proposal? Uh, the proposal bio research, research center is also on preclinical studies. I hope this continue to flourish as UPLB can really contribute well in this field. Uh, at least, uh, at least in our division in animal biology division in IBS, we have three uh, representatives: uh, Dr. Grace Dakuma, who's an epidemiologist; uh, Dr. Vishal Gaypalier, who's a parasitologist; and Professor. Jude Dimaluga, who's, uh, who's work on, on viruses associated with monkeys. So, and it's also, uh, of course, a, a wildlife biologist as well, uh, veteran wildlife biologist. So, so those are the, the, the three that I know uh, that are members of the Zoonosis Center. Sir Philip, you mentioned earlier some unexplored areas in the Philippines that you yes, suggest to be targeted. In terms yes, of priority, which do you plan to prioritize? For example, yes. once the pandemic is over, I know most of yes, us are raring to go field work. So which yes, do you decide to yes, go visit first? Actually, I was supposed to write in the slide priority area, Nano. But I think our wish list, uh, the top of the wish list, would be Sultan Gudarat. Uh, that was the ground zero for the Hinipo virus that was uh, detected in horses that caused 11 fatalities. Uh, so we want to go not necessarily in, in that the, the, municip the municipality was Nino Benigno Aquino uh, municipality. Uh, we would want to go there because, well, but unfortunately, uh, we travel advisory for foreigners, uh, not going to Mindanao, which is uh, sad. So yeah, that's that that would be the top of our wish list, and of course Palawan as well. Uh, we've been trying for several years. We attempted in back in 2008. We were successful, so yeah. So we would like to go back. We would like to go there. Hopefully, we're successful right now. Um, what about human movements? Like, um, for example, now everybody else is traveling, or um, some of our wildlife are being marketed. Are there connectivities in terms of transmission of viruses that way? Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> well, what happened in, in the, the, the the two SARS pandemic, uh, which originated in 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 different uh, in China, uh, they traced it to a wet market. Uh, uh, some of those that are sold in the wet, in the wet markets were uh, illegally traded wildlife. So pan uh, the first pandemic was from civet. The next now is the the, the, the pangolin, and right now pangolin is the most traded uh, wildlife in the world. So there's a hunting commod uh, hunter commodity chain that is happening right now. So hunting of these. Uh, of these uh, pangolin or civet. And uh, what's happening right now, what, what, what they uh, discovered is at some point, these, these pangolin or these civets were exposed as well to the viruses from bats. So we don't know what was the dynamics. I don't know when to know so what's, what's the, how did it happen, but uh, the genetics were, uh, were very uh, irrefutable. So, so there is, uh, so what's happening right now is around from the wet market. Uh, I think Mr. Emerson C, uh, who's working on illegal trade, would be uh, much uh, position, well positioned to answer this. So it'd be very interesting. What are the places in the Philippines that actually still have this wet market that that, see, that sell this uh, illegally traded wildlife? Medyo uh, documented but they they are they are definitely. I asked this question also in relation to Dr. Sabino's question, wherein. He is asking or wondering whether have you considered using guano as a way of detecting viruses which might uh, be present in bats? Mm, so guano uh, is did. Yeah, uh, Dr. Marian Polido, who will be talking later this afternoon, uh, they did a metagenomics of uh, the bat guano in Pangasinan, but they uh, looked into uh, bacteria. Atta. I'm not very, very sure. Sorry, Mam Marian or Ponchai or something like that. Uh, but you can do, I think, uh, metagenomics. So, but unfortunately, uh, this is not the realm of my expertise. I'm a bat ecologist, but uh, they've been doing this. Uh, so, they've also detected viruses from fecal pellets. So, the 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 the, the, the feces that were caught directly uh, that were recovered from the bats themselves. So, the mismos bat kinuha, and not just from the from the guano that's been fired up, but 
uh, they've done that before, metagenomics. So what are the viruses that were there? So, yeah. Very interesting, very interesting, very interesting. We have a question from Aral Jan Aquino. Good afternoon po. May I ask po if it's really already possible to conduct field research studies involving bats even at these times of current pandemic and community quarantine? If yes po, will there be any need for additional proper safety equipment at direct ward compared to those previously recommended? Yeah. Uh, bef right now, I think that the Department of Environment and Natural Resources through DMB has issued a moratorium on um, suspension of research on bats, on handling, transport, and research on bats. Uh, makes sense. Okay, okay lang. And of course, uh, the travel lack lockdown, uh, the travel position has been a uh, major mahirapi movement, but if all of these, uh, the pandemic woes, uh, it too shall pass, so uh, of course th there will be new protocols involved in doing this work. Uh, like kami, mga wildlife biologists, we've been very, very ano ba to? pabaya <laughs> about that. Uh, we've, um, <clears throat> uh, dati, we're not using masks, uh, but in the last five years, we're doing so. But of course, when we're using masks, we haven't used any PPE before. Siguro baby steps. Nakarating din tayo dyan. At lalo na ngayon. And of course, uh, it would be very wise to do that. So, and of course, um, uh, rabies shots as well. So, mga vaccines for, for rabies. Uh, it's still a possibility that you might contract. Although wala pang um, cases of uh, rabies from, from bats. So it's, got, it's all going, going to be uh, different, the protocols. And of course, we have the IAHOOK here in our university, so which approves all the research on doing on wild animals and bats are included as well. So yeah, so we have ex field of experts on the IAHOOK committee who's looking into that and uh, trying to evaluate or assess the, the feasibility and the safetyness of your methods on working on bats and all other wildlife animals. The pandemic is going to change the face of field work. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, say no. Protocols. Magkakasama tayo, di ba? Sigurado. I mean, permits and everything. Mga thesis. We're going to have trouble being dehydrated with all of the PPEs that are going to be. Exactly, ma'am. So, ma'am. Sana yung sura natin. Yes, ma'am. Para tayong astronaut. Para tayong astronaut. Um, Dr. Cardenas is also wondering if these results are featureized write-ups, uh, hoping these pieces of information uh, will reach traders illegal, uh, illegal yes. or not. Uh, do you have I, communicators, I mean, for example, science communicators in your team? Um, uh, some of the works, work that we've done, uh, parang travel log, we have been published in Animal Scene. Uh, I, have a, I have a magazine there. Uh, mostly mga animal lovers, pet lovers. Uh, they've been fe featured regularly. So a total of mga nine magazine articles na yata na, or, or eight na, na, na featured doon. Uh, but yung talagang full-blown uh, popularizing or uh, communicating these results. Of course, uh, Florante Cruz, the, the hardworking Florante uh -huh. Cruz through the Museum of Natural History have been you know, um, popularizing our work. And uh, she's done videos, of spectacular videos for work as well. And this has been shown in, in conferences in Japan and other parts of the country. Uh, it would be great if you can do that. Parang mas malawak yung coverage here in the Philippines as well. So we have one more question. Are there any virology research laboratories in the Philippines that can support further studies in this project? Uh, RITM is the... Uh, I've uh, been doing this work. Uh, sila yung pinaka bihasa sa ganyan. Uh, virology work. RITM. Uh, my, my, my colleague and colleague and good friend, Dr. Demetrio, uh, Catalino Demetrio. So, and the PGC uh, in Diliman and UP Mindanao uh, are working on that as well, virology. Uh, in the PGC Mindanao has uh, uh, published a lot of work. First coronavirus, uh, beta coronavirus in Mindanao. So they published that work in Philippine Journal of Science. And of course, with the, the advent, what's happening right now with the, the, the pandemic, we have a need for having these testing laboratories that are at least PSL2 or 3. I don't know if PSL4. So 
these um, these uh, facilities can be used for for virus research definitely as well. We have the expertise, maram time virology, Filipino virologists that are very very capable of doing that, and wildlife ecologists as well, uh, all over the country that can be work hand in hand. If you have if you want to work in Mindanao, there we have uh, bat ecologists there in Visayas. Northern Luzon, definitely. So we can do this uh, collaborative work. It's highly feasible. Okay, thank you, Philip. In okay. the interest of time, because we have schedules and we also have um, oh, yeah. more, uh, papers to be presented this afternoon, more interesting topics. But we would like to take this opportunity to thank you for that interesting and informative talk. You, Truly, we could spend the whole afternoon talking about bats and viruses. Yes, but at this yes, juncture, Allow me to present the electronic certificate of recognition signed by our director, Juan Carlos C. Gonzalez. So uh, may I ask everyone to at least uh, send some applause virtually to Prof. Alviola. And thank you. Okay, so before I end the seminar, let me give out a few reminders. Please fill up the seminar evaluation form to get a certificate of participation. The link is flashed on the screen and copied in the chat box. Please click on the link provided to evaluate the webinar. We are also giving out a link to six printable souvenir cards featuring photos taken by Nat Geo photographer Joel Sartore. The link is also on the screen and it's copied in the chat box. Finally, please follow the UPLB Museum in all of our social media accounts. You can also find the UPLB Museum of Natural History in Wikipedia. So we will all be taking a break now. Let me thank everyone for attending this session. Our next session will be at 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. to be uh, led by Prof. Judeline C. Dimalibot. Thank you.